Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Today it's chef versus normals in what we're calling the grocery shop challenge. Inside that bag is a bunch of mystery ingredients and we're going to ask our three normal home cooks to create three midweek meals from just those fresh ingredients. And then we'll get Ben, a chef, to do the same and see what he can rustle up. There is bound to be chefiness, normalness, panickiness and hopefully some usefulness. Dig into the bag, boys. We've got... Oh, snacking chips. Blackberries. Potatoes. Cheddar. Sour cream. Butter beans. Avocado. Uh, beef beef mince. mince. Limes. We will also have access to a basic staples cupboard. We'll give you some thinking time. 30 minutes on the clock. Start in three, two, one, cook. So we got, we have one dish. Jamie has a vision. We need to work out another two out of this. Yeah, we basically spent five minutes start, just, start, just worrying. Just start doing things. Start doing stuff. Right, you peel those and let's just get them boiling because we know parsnips take ages. What also takes ages? Potatoes. Should I boil those in the coconut milk? Um, in terms of like, boil them like a puree or something? Yeah, or like a bit of a mash? Let, let, let no, yeah. oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just boil them first. Okay. So I think I've got a bit of a plan. I'm going to take the red onion, the green pepper, the paneer, and I'm going to make some kebabs. And then I'm going to serve that with rice, which I think we can mix some frozen peas through. Maybe use some of the sour cream as a bit of a dipping sauce, maybe. Sounds good. Got potatoes. I'm just going to start cooking them to save time. I'm cutting my parsnips into small chunks so it cooks quicker. Should we do like a cheat, like bolognese sauce? We've got chopped tomatoes over there. Easy, yeah. yes. Like, yes, yes. Remember, we're looking for easy, delicious midweek. So we think half an hour is the kind of time that people want to be spending midweek. Jamie, we didn't let you freestyle. God, I thought that was oil. <laughs> He thought that was oil he was pouring in, but splashed it first and then sniffed it and realised it was vinegar. Oh, no! Why don't we? Oh, oh, I'll do a tomato get... butter bean. Yes, sausage. yes, yes, yes. Like yes, a bit yes. of a shakshuka, but instead of oh, eggs, we're just going to scatter paneer and sour cream. Yeah, and like, that is amazing. I, it's not. My onion's frying off. I'm now going to go in with some cumin and some paprika. You are approaching halfway through. I couldn't get a pan big enough, so I'm using two pans. I want this beef to go crispy. I don't want it to stew in its fat. I'm gonna now mash this into the coconut milk that's in here already. Got some allspice? No. Now, as a dippy thing, what should I, sour cream and lime? With oh. a little bit of spice in it? What, lime zest? Not, not lime. I don't know. It's what already sour. It is, isn't it? So it doesn't need the lime. No. So maybe just a little bit of curry powder. Outside of curry powders, we've got some cumin here. Yep, cumin and coriander. You have had 20 minutes, oh. which means you have 10 remaining. What, has anyone got any ideas of what to do with this avocado? I... Oh. Do you think you can it, use it? It, would, it, would go in, it could go in mine. I'm going to have cooked potatoes. I could just serve served boiled potatoes. Last couple of minutes. Ah. I'm making a little salsa to go on top of this. 30 seconds. Last five, four, three, ah. Ah. two, ah. one. Oh, boys! <laughs> that is six plates of food. <laughs> yeah! Do they taste good? I don't I know! know. <laughs> Neither do I! So what have we got here? Paneer and veg kebabs with a beautiful lime pickleness to them with some rice and spiced sour cream. Good rice, good flavours, and good use of sour cream and lime to kind of bring mm. it together. As a dish, it definitely works. Yeah. yeah. Well cooked rice. Mm. I as am surprised yeah. as you are. Mm. We have three different recipes that I know how to make that I've put onto one plate. Mm -hmm. uh, parsnip and coconut mash or puree, salt and pepper beef, and a quick salsa. 
I know it's come from three, <laughs> like three different corners of the world, but I really like it. <laughs> it's tasty, it's just really confusing. <laughs> that. I think all three elements work, just not on the same plate. This is a spiced tomato-y sauce with all the offcuts put together. It's rich from the tomato puree and the tomatoes. It's good. It's really tasty. I really like it. I feel like that one had a vision from the start and delivered to that vision. That one kind of took all the ingredients you wanted to put them on a plate. And that was actually something quite clever with what you'd been left with. And then this is the only thing I want to draw your attention to. You did really well on time. You used an awful lot of the kitchen and appliances and equipment. This was kind of what was left. And there's a risk that with half a block of paneer, some cheese, half an avocado, some blackberries, these are the things that are going to be in your fridge at the end of the week and then get thrown away. I am intrigued to see what the chef does with this lot. Let's do it. All right, Ebbers, feeling confident? Yeah, I've got a plan. OK, let's see what you can do. Now, we've allowed Ben 30 minutes per recipe. Can we that's, that's fair? Yeah. Three, two, one, cook. Start by preheating an oven, or in this case, actually, a grill. And I'm going to line a tray with tinfoil. I'm starting with a salsa. I think there's lots of salsa ingredients here. Baz, you did a good job. I'm doing mine slightly differently, because midweek, we want to get as much flavour in here as possible, so I'm going to roast them. So far, all the tomatoes, two of the three limes, and a whole green pepper. Correct. One of the three onions. Going in dry, under a hot grill. Second thing I'm going to do is to make some crispy beef. You whacked 500 grams of mince in for a single dish, two portions. That feels like a lot of meat. OK. Quite deliberately, leaving the beef for a while so it gets crispy on one side before you start moving it around. Beef is nice and crispy. I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm going to add in salt and cumin. Lots of flavour. Veg for our salsa. Don't worry about the tray and the tin foil though, because now we're going to start layering up on here. So, some of our tortilla chips. That, that already is something that I would never do. No. Less washing up is so vital midweek. Half of the cheese. Oh, yeah, love this one. So now we've got a little bit of heat from the salsa on the board, so we can go in with garlic, the juice of the limes, a little bit of fresh coriander. And because we've roasted it off, it just gives it an extra dimension to what essentially was the same ingredients that you put onto your dish. It's what you did, but better. <laughs> Over goes our crispy cumin beef. Loads of this salsa. Some sour cream. Fresh coriander, that's crispy chilli beef. Nachos, midweek, take it to the table, everyone digs in. And in theory, one board, one knife, one pan and a spatula is all you've used. That took you just over 20 minutes. Not bad. Dish number two is going to be a parsnip aligo with beef meatballs and pickled blackberries. Parsnip aligo. Aligo is a beautiful French dish that is potato, but with lots of cheese. But we're doing it with parsnip as well to add a little bit of sweetness that's going to fight against the pickled blackberries and the beefy beefiness. Pickled blackberries. Ooh, parsnip cool. mash, I'm not sure about that, Evers. <laughs> so all of that veg into a pan, just cover it maybe a couple of centimetres above. Season generously, lid on, bring up to a boil. I'm going to use a second onion here, and this one I'm just going to finely dice. I'm going to keep some of it back for garnish, because a little bit of raw onion gives you some crunch in a dish, a little bit of acidity, um, and, and a little bit of colour. All the dishes do have balance in terms of the three major food groups, but we desperately try to get as much veggie in as possible. We're only going to use a little bit of the beef protein, but we've also got cheese as a protein. We've also we're going to have to work out what else we can bolt the dish out with, and the best thing is vegetables. Good for you, affordable, and it's generally the same vegetables used the world over, just with different spices. So chopped onion, the other half of the minced beef, the remainder of the tortilla chips, and I'm going to season it with allspice. The thing here a chef is doing that us normals would never do is he's seen the ingredients and gone, what dishes can I create out of this to serve up? Whereas we buy by recipe, 
and therefore buy a lot more food. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Remember, whenever you handle raw meat, wash your hands, and then that tray can go into the oven. Our potato and parsnip just come up to a boil. They will need 10 to 12 minutes. Our meatballs have just gone in, they will need 10 to 12 minutes. That's loads of time to do one last thing, which is pickle some blackberries. A teaspoon of sugar and a tablespoon of vinegar. They can just go into a pan, but two minutes in a microwave, job done. What I now have is 10 minutes of waiting. You've had 13 minutes. It's going to look like a lot because you're going to see it and perceive mashed potato. But remember, that's also got your entire portion of veg combined. To make the aligo, we're going to throw in the rest of the sour cream we didn't use from the nachos and the rest of the cheese. <laughs> that is our parsnip aligo beef meatballs and pickled blackberries. Okay, so for this final dish, there's not much left in the way of fresh ingredients, but we are going to make good use of staple cupboard ingredients and spices to take it to a new place. This is a one tray paneer bake. I, that's what I got to, wasn't it, after I was kebabbing them? And I was like, yeah, I should have just done it as a tray bake. No, I'm glad you kept kebabs. I think I like the shape and they look yeah. appetizing. But I'm gonna weigh in 150 grams of basmati rice from the store cupboard. Oh, shut up. You're what? tray baking rice. Curry powder. So you're spicing the rice and individually oiling all the grains so that they don't stick as much because we haven't washed it. So we are cheating. This is so We are rogue. hacking our way through it. This feels odd. Oh! oh! When you have a tin of chickpeas, you can save the juice and whip it up into aquafaba because it's full of proteins. Why would you tip all that nutrition down the sink? In my, in my efficiency, I've forgotten one thing before I mix that, a stock cube. I like what you did, Jane, with those skewers. You took it to a part of the world that uses paneer regularly, you spiced it with curry powder from the store cupboard. I'm doing all those same things. My only logic is, if I cut that in half and use half, I'm probably not going to get round to using the other half in the rest of the week unless it's another dish that's very similar. So in this instance, this time I'm going to use the whole thing into this tray bake. The rice isn't cooked, Ben. No, no, no. What will happen is as the rice cooks and absorbs the liquid, it will expand and push up. The paneer will colour on the top. It's kind of like half going to steam in that juice and half crisp up. Into an oven, 200 degrees Celsius, 20 minutes. In that time, very little to do except for one therapy. coriander <laughs> chutney, which is coriander, chilli, ginger garlic. So quite deliberately with all of these recipes, we've avoided using kitchen appliances, blenders, food processors, mixers, so everything can be done on the board. You've literally got 20 minutes while that tray bakes in the oven. All I'm gonna do is combine that with lime juice. It sounds silly, but if you're squeezing a lime, I always cut it that way so you can get through all of the segments. Me off Not the other way, and I always cut it into three. Because if you've got tiny little hands like me, you get more juice out of it this way. Less waste. Evans, am I right in saying, with the squeeze of that lime, oh, no. you've now used everything from your bag of fresh ingredients? Yes. That's going over the dish, as is the last of the onion. That is all the dirty stuff from three days of cooking, with the exception of the stuff that I washed up as I went, which was one other pan and a colander. I think he's trying to prove a point. Do, do you think? <laughs> Midweek, in the table, yeah. crispy chilli beef. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers. Oh man, that salsa is awesome. It tastes so sweet. The roasting makes such a difference. Yeah. But he's outrageously simple. Cheers. Cheers. This is weird. No, it's not. No, it's oh not. My goodness. Excellent. Wow. Those blackberries cuts through. It's really, really light and refreshing. Meatballs are amazing, mate. Mm. It's a big portion. It's a good way of making 
the beef stretch. If I was to use the word biryani, would I be yes. really bad? It's a spiced Indian rice dish, as is kedgeri, as is a biryani, but it's kind of cooked pilau style. So the, ri the rice is actually mm. cooked, isn't it? Yep. Oh no. You've got paneer for protein, but you've also got the butter beans. It's going to get beat, but f it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is delicious. And then you get the chutney. And that just takes it to a completely other level. Oh, wow. OK, give that. Wow. I'm sure Staggering. we can all agree, six incredible Ooh. dishes. Three may have been slightly better than another three. Um, but we'd love to know from you, what would you have done with that set of ingredients? Comment down below, let us know. Because it's all the thinking and hacks and tricks that went into these three that we apply as a food team to all of the meal packs we do on the app so that you can get variety, super tasty meals midweek with a single grocery shopping list. And it's been absolutely made for normal, so we got you back. And you can try it for a full month free by clicking the link downstairs. I would say come back next week to watch another video, but don't bother. We've peaked. This is it. Oh, <laughs> that I think is, we're that, done that now. Is exceptional. Did you have a favourite? That one. We that have one. peaked. Stand out. Collectively, we have peaked <laughs> as a team. The Meal Packs app is part of our sorted gift this year, which includes 12 month subscription, yellow or navy apron, and choice of cookbook. We think it's a great gift, whatever the season, for the foodie in your life, even if that foodie is you. It's £65, which is a discount on full price, so if you want to snap it up, then follow the link in the description box below. Somebody said that to me the other day. It's like, why don't you sit down here? Because it looks. Ridiculous. Yeah. We're like Westlife. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting exciting. Stand up. Key oh. change. Yeah. <laughs>